Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I appreciate your support. I got a question for you. How do you know if a tank is both good and played by good players? How do you know a tank is both very good and played by good players? Think about that for a minute. We'll get to it in just a minute. And I'm here in my Type 59. You might be thinking it's related to my question I just gave you. And it is, <laughs> of course. And uh, then we got some people putting some racist BS on the chat. That, that's great. Anyway, didn't notice that until just now as I started this. Hopefully uh, someone sees that and bans those guys. That'd be great. Here we go. I'm in my Type 59 Tier 8. Now this is a preferential Tier 8 Chinese. The legendary Type 59. An absolute legend. Got a big nerf years and years and years ago. It was running rampant when it was first put out. The original OP tank, the original OP premium. Got a nerf, then got a little buff here and there. And it is currently a still very good, a still very good tank. I go to the middle, looking for somebody maybe trying to push through. Lots of heavy, so it's all tier 8, but I really didn't want to go be the first guy to soak up the 5100's clip or try to start brawling with the KV-5 and the rest of these guys. But I'll go ahead, I've gone and pushed 2, I've gone and, gone and done it, and these guys are still yapping at each other. <laughs> so You can see that we've got a bunch of guys sitting here hold down. And based on what I'm seeing on the bottom down there, I can. it looks like they've all turned to start fighting the guys on the bottom. So I'm actually just going to get very aggressive. Come on up here and we'll get a shot off in the 5100. I eat one, but I'm able to jump back. And I am enticing my buddies to come up. And here they come. And that 5100 says, oh, geez. And starts backing off. Get a shot there. What I want to do is get up close as fast as possible so I can avoid getting hit by the artillery. We sit there rocking back and forth too long. It won't be long before the artillery comes in and takes a shot on us. So I'll put a shot on the ST1. Unfortunately, I get a return shot, but it's only a track. I'll fix that real quick because I need to get back in this fight and just start whittling these guys down. And the IS-6 really just pushes right into their faces, but that allows us, because they're busy shooting him, to get on these guys and just start wailing on them. So we take a bunch of shots. Some of that gold spam I just did, I wish I had not done because I'm probably going to need that a little while later, but I'm gonna wait for my buddy to pass. There we go. I actually got that shot off, didn't I, somehow? No idea how I managed that, but I managed to not shoot my buddy. I like the KV-5 on fire. It's not here to have a repair kit. I'll go ahead and burn the first aid kit so that I can get my aim in and get my shot reloaded and now we'll just go right by the Marbrecker. There we go. You can't fight us from two directions. That's what one of those other guys should be doing. The, the low should really just be going by, but good on him for keeping him busy. We'll just put another shot into his back of his nugget. We're going to get a side shot here. I'll take this dude down. There he goes. And that's what I was talking about a little earlier when I was shooting softer tanks with my gold. I wish I had not been doing that because I probably would have been a lot more comfortable shooting the Marbrecker with gold. Now, the good news here is the Lerva and the Mutant both kind of see what's happening. I turn around. There's no reason to push onto their cap. We're actually losing by one right now. And there is no reason to push onto their cap while they are threatening ours. See? All you would be doing if you push onto their cap is you bring their campers into the game. Right? You're bringing the, Those guys are going to sit there. They're not going to do anything. No problem. You don't have to worry about it. Go take care of the push to the cap. All right, a little glitch in the matrix. We are back. We got 2,968. And like I was saying, going back to clean up their pushers that are headed up to the cap. And they've got quite a few, actually. So the Emil is still back here. The Chrysler K gets hold down. And we start looking for shots on these guys. And I was pleasantly surprised. Su surprised. I was presently surprised and pleased that none of my team actually just kept droning on into their cap. I thought that was fantastic. I take that first shot, a little courtesy backup in case he saw me. He didn't, so I'm able to take another shot. And that time he did see me. So I'm not sure if somebody else got a little closer or what exactly happened there. Maybe I actually scooted a little closer on that shot. So I'm going to change what I'm doing, come around this way. They clean out our Chrysler K car, unfortunately. So now I'm going to come around this other side, see if I can't find this super. There he is take kind of a bad shot and a return shot that misses very lucky right there and then I take an arty so that is not good the PR is not really looking at me 
and this is not a great spot now see I've only got about 35 40 seconds till that dude reloads hopefully he starts shooting somebody else I see the stir I sneak one into the top of the armor and don't bounce it that was very lucky and then he gets hammered for a big hit or several hits and now he tries to run that allows me to take him down and I'm just sort of waiting now for the Artie to hit me again. We're still trying to clean this up. Take a shot there. I believe that actually went in once we get to the end of this. So I'm at 3,790 damage and shooting most of the game. We'll sneak one there. It doesn't quite get to him. He misses, thankfully. And there's the artillery again. I knew it was going to hit me eventually. I probably should have pulled out of that area about 15 seconds ago. We had it doped. I was just trying to get rid of the 50 TP if I could. So I'll just head off this way. I'm going to leave the 50 TP to the Lurva and the, and the Mutant. The Mutant ends up taking them down. And now we've got a bit of advantage. Although we have no artillery, we do have five tanks and they have three. We know where two of them were fairly recently sitting in the middle. Up to 3,790 damage. So we'll swing back this way. I've got enough hit points to take a couple hits. Although a splash and a hit from something like the Scorpion will take me out of the game. So I'm looking for the 44 or the 4190 GF, and here comes one of them right here. Sneak a shot there, and then all of a sudden I notice that the Scorpion G is behind me there. He's fighting the KV-4, and I'm really hoping the KV-4 can take some hit points off of him. He's at full hit points. The other thing I would like to avoid is getting hit by the artillery. I'm not able to kill the 4190. He gets out into the flats down there. The T-44 is up there, and really I probably missed an opportunity here, didn't I? Oh yeah. Yep, I could have killed the T-44, so that was a, definitely a missed opportunity right there. One of the bigger mistakes I've made this game in particular. And I'll just sneak one in there to the G. He sees me. I'm going to try to get one more before he gets a shot on me. And this is kind of foolish because he hits my front. And I should have not poked there and stayed there. I was attempting to get one more shot inside his reload cycle, but I paid the price. So up to 4,500. And we got the T-44. Now the, the low, I, on, on the one hand I like what he's doing, but he's sort of droning out into the middle right there. And unfortunately the Scorpion G takes down the KV-4. And there's the artillery, so I knew it would be paying attention to me. And here comes the Scorpion G. Now that the KV-4 is gone, he's coming up and trying to get a piece of me. So I'm really hoping he'll just come blaze, blazing around this corner. I'll shoot him and run. But I think he's being kind of smart. Instead of chasing me, he knows he's got a problem over there on the cap. The low has the 4190. The mutant takes down one Artie. The 4190 gets the mutant. And now the Emil is taking the long way around. All of a sudden, from a pretty good advantage, now we're in a bit of a pickle right here. Our position isn't great. The, the Lurva is out in the open. I'm trying to see if I can get a piece of this scout. I can't quite get around to get the shot on him. And I'm really expecting that Scorpion to show up at any moment right behind me. And then I see him do this. Oh, and then finally RNG lets me down after a lot of very good shots from RNG. And the Lurva gets him, which was huge. See, the Emil is basically still out of the fight. Unknown why he would go down that way, but he did. And it's probably a matter of, oh, I'm flanking. I need to flank. So this will be a very clever flank. We'll never expect it. The only problem is it's taking so long. So I'll come down here, and I'll make another mistake which will end up being fatal we'll come up here I expect this dude to be up here he is in fact up here unfortunately he's going in my direction and instead of maybe instead of maybe stopping and attempting to pull back maybe get behind these things and reload for one more shot I just drive up into him and hope that my turret's gonna work which clearly it does not and we're at 4771 damage it ends up being over a 5,000 damage game because that one blind shot went in. We will end up winning this. And thankfully, the, the Lurva and the, the Emil pulled this thing out because I made a couple bad mistakes end game that could have thrown the game. Now, my question was at the beginning, how do you know that if a, how do you know a tank is both driven by very good players and is a very good tank? Well, this ends up being a class one with a 1,400 plus base. A, a, a class one mastery with a 1400 plus base so I'll show you the results of it right after I suspected it when I came out of it I said surely that is an ace tanker but nope now it was all same tier but still the base number was 1400 plus 
and only a class one. That's pretty amazing. That is how you know if a tank is both good and driven by very good players. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something along the way, especially Endgame, how not to blow it. <laughs> we did win, though. We did win. All right, we will see you.